Every so often we receive a report that stands out due to being a little bit different and not entirely conforming with all sightings. A clean, clear visual and a warm and passionate articulation by the witness can be gripping. In this case, the witness not only had one but two sightings, four years and 1,600 kilometres apart. The first event tells of a personality that is almost unheard of. If the situation was different, there could have been a very different outcome. It leaves me wondering if it was a case of feeling an energy connection with the witness or something else. Remember the golden rule, where there's one, there's another not too far away. I could imagine this Yowie's minder standing there just beyond the bush line, thinking, oh no. This occurred at Curra, Queensland, next to Gympie, which is a hotbed of previous sightings, as we all know too well, including our own. It's also the home of some of my most favourite Yowie sighting reports such as Audio Report 145 Glenbar, 150 Menonbar, 146 Waluga. In fact, there's two from Waluga, four years apart. We also have audio reports from Scotchy Pocket, Aramara, and a few around Tin Can Bay. Speaking of interesting Yowie reports and Tin Can Bay, which isn't too far from today's report, an encounter of a whole other dynamic occurred there in 1992. It was during a military training operation at Tin Can Bay or Wide Bay Military Warfare Land. There's so many close by documented sightings that need to be told and as you know I'm passionate about all of them. I can tell you this with confidence because I spoke to some of the people who were there at the time and they confirmed to me personally it was all true. It was also a topic and discussed on the military forums. In 1992, a team of six men operated a four-week role as the bad guys. In the beginning of the last week, the fourth week, two men left in a vehicle and conducted another mission. During that night's camp and the perimeter checks, two of the men became very concerned. It was also around that period they received a large ration drop of meat. They had an uneasy feeling that something wasn't quite right and the feeling of being watched. The four remaining men at camp radioed for backup as though something circling the camp and it wasn't the enemy. (laughs) It also wasn't human. The group's two members who had left arrived back in a vehicle, but their situation escalated. During the night, 22.30, while in their tents, the creature entered the camp and began pulling it apart. The guys were terrified. I know, because they told me. Tents dropped on them and around them. They lay there frozen. Finally, they managed to let off some blank rounds and some flares. They called an evac. Those higher up in the chain of command were not impressed. And one member said to me, they received a drilling before being told to go back there and wrap up the morning's simulated attack by the good guys at 700, it was seen again, and they all fled back to Camp Kerr. They had their weapons taken off them, and they were promptly sent back to Brisbane after some harsh words from above. In the words of one member I spoke to at the time, he said, we really had our butts kicked. They didn't believe us. Let's digress to today's report. Before we head back over the highway to our witness's first sighting, I'll quickly touch on the location of her second, which was between Mansfield and Benalla in Victoria. You're between two mountain ranges as you head towards Benalla, and the mountain to the east is the cusp of the Great Dividing Range, and that's Yowie Territory. It's time to hand you over to Sarah Bignall and back to Queensland as I say, Welcome to Curra. Thank you so much for getting in touch with us. You had uh, an incredible sighting in the Gympie area. Yes. It feels so good to be able to 
tell people without being regarded as crazy. It's not that I've, I've seen you know, lots of things like this. Start from the beginning, where it was, when it was. Up at the end of Thomas Road, up in the car up area outside Gympie. Um, it was morning. I was looking into the bush. I was standing out on a, a veranda or like a porch area, and I was looking out into the bush. Out came this large, ready, orangutangy, human-like creature. It's waving its arms up and down like it was very happy to see me. I, I was surprised. I, I just stood there looking at it. It had a, a grin, I could say, on its face, like, and it started walking. It was walking towards me. And I said to my friend who was sitting behind me, he, he was sitting down, I said, hey, have your neighbours got monkeys? That was the only thing I could think of. Um, an orangutan had, had escaped from the zoo or someone had been keeping animals illegally there. And it was walking until my friend stood up and then that stopped. Then we went inside and um, you don't talk about these things, though. It was really um, strange that we didn't talk about it because I, I couldn't decipher what I'd seen. It was amazing and it was, it seemed like an eternity that I was looking at this being. Um, what stood out was his very long hands but he was waving his hands up and down like <laughs> he was happy to see me and uh, it just presented itself to me from the trees. Now, I could see the trees moving behind him. Maybe there were other other family members in there or maybe he was the smallest one. I don't know. But it was beautiful. It was the most beautiful thing and and it will stay with me forever. I, I'm honoured to have seen that. And I reckon if my friend wasn't there, he would have walked right up to me. What a very special honour. It is an honour. to Yes, to I know. That. It walked because I was looking out into the forest. It pushed the trees aside and it just walked out. They're like, here I am, and it's waving its arms. You know how children put their arms up and down to their sides? i like, there's there's my friend, you know, oh, well, let's play or something. And I'm think, I am I said, hey, have your neighbours got monkeys? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know about yaoi's, and I, I told a few people, and people laughed at me, and then I, I didn't say anything anymore. And then I researched, I, you know, hairy monkeys in apes uh, it wasn't really an ape the face was um it had more um aboriginal features it was more human he was black the face was black and the chest was black and when uh, it lifted its arms i could see uh, hair hanging from under the arms very very long arms and very big hands even if, even though it was at a distance i could see the very large hands how tall do you think it was? It was big. Seven foot it was. It was it was a big a big being. I don't want to call it an animal. The way he presented himself, uh, because he must have been staring from inside the trees. You know, he was contemplating. Because if they present themselves, I'm seeing all these stories and it's by chance that the sightings happen. But this one, he walked right out in front of me. I would have walked down. I mean, I'm very curious. Curiosity killed the cat. It will stay. The image will stay with me forever. Absolutely beautiful. When you first noticed, you said that it had like a grin on its face. Yes. So did you notice the eyes and the nose and the mouth? When I said, do your neighbours have monkeys? But looking at the face, and it's, it wasn't a very ape-like, the face, the, um, the mouth, it had a grin. And the eyes were open, you know, hi there, Ooh, boop, let, let's go for a walk, uh, like a person. And did you see the teeth? 
I can't remember. I can't That's remember okay. if I saw teeth, yeah. That's okay. And what shape was the head? It had a bit of a cone at the top, just a little bit. It wasn't like a human head. Uh, not much of a neck there. The legs were bow, not straight leg, but very long arms, you know, when it, when they were going up and down, they were extended like, yes, huge arms, broad shoulders, three feet across the shoulders. It was a broad thing. And the hair was a gingery red colour, you Gingery mentioned. red, yes. You said it had big hands, so you did notice the hands? Yes, very big hands. Was the hair covering it all the way down, including down to the hands? The hands, they were black. When he lifted his hands, uh, the palms, I saw they were black. On the top of the hands, yes, it had hair. On the palms, uh, no, the palms were black and his chest was black and his face was black. Did you notice any noise? Did it did it make any vocalizations? No, it didn't. I couldn't hear anything. You know how time stands still? He was in front of me and you know when you look at a movie and they stop the noise and you can just hear the sound? That's how I felt. It was surreal. That image there was surreal and how many times I want to drive up there and have a look around (laughs) because they are there. For him to come into that property, they must come from the Kara forest there. There's a forest there. That's where I think he came from. Now I'm looking via satellite. I've been looking on my own all these years to see and maybe other people see him, his family around there. Well, he we, didn't just pop up from anywhere. We do have a lot of reports around the Gympie area, a hotbed yes. of activity up that way, so it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if other people have seen that particular yeah. thing. And he's not alone. He can't be alone. Did your friend who lives there, your friend saw uh, this beautiful being? Yes, Yes, I went there to go bushwalking and to relax and, um, well, he went around locking the doors and he said, okay, well, you're not going into the bush. Please don't walk into the, in the bush. Uh, he was very scared. He was concerned. He was there alone. I could see that he was frightened. Did he mention that he had seen that being before or that he'd had any strange goings on on that property? No, no. He was surprised that he saw that. Does he still live there? No, I don't think so. I think that property was sold. I remember in your email you mentioned that you didn't really talk about it after that happened, he kind of locked you in the house no. for a few days. And yeah, he locked, yeah, he went really around locking it. the doors and seeing if the doors were locked. Even in the mornings, we didn't go outside for our coffee. I only stayed for a few days there and, you know, he said, oh, God, how am I going to stay here alone now? It was something that appeared for me. It's like he knew me. When he walked out of those trees... He was waving his arms up and down. Yeah, I consider myself very special to have seen that. They probably were able to sense something special about you for the being to present himself or herself to you like that. It's uh, in such a friendly way too. You had no sense of foreboding or danger. No, and like I always say, um, my culture, we're very uh, brave. I would have walked up to it. I would have stayed there and allow it to come closer. But when he saw my friend stand up, he he sort of lost his bearings. Oh, there's someone else there. (laughs) She's not alone. And um, then we went inside and that was, but uh, for the rest of the days, I could feel the presence. I could feel something looming outside. And so could my friend. You mentioned that your culture, where are you from? What's your culture? I'm Greek. Ah, I thought so. I thought just looking (laughs) at your name, I just thought, oh, she must be Greek. Yes, I'm Greek. 
Once you came inside, did you see the being turn around and leave? No, he was there. He was very sad. He put his hands down when my friend stood up. You know how we do when we're disappointed. He put yeah. his hands down and we just left him there all bow-legged. And oh. what, what the- oh. <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't turn around. He was still there. We left him there and I was looking outside and I, I spent the rest of the days looking from the windows and my friend was always asking me, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? No, I don't think it came too close to the house, but I could feel its presence. How long did the being stay outside for? Oh, I don't know. It could have been 10 minutes because it looked from the trees and it took a few steps forward. I couldn't say anything. You can't talk because you're trying to to think at what you're looking at. So it was a long sighting. He was there and he's waving his arms. I mean, it seemed like an eternity, but I think 10 minutes we were there. All of this took 10 minutes. After that, you didn't see the being leave. It was just no, not there when no, you No, it was there. It was there. He wanted to walk up to us, to me, to me. I think he wanted to walk up to me. I don't know, but maybe it was dangerous. Then I thought he, if it had walked up to me, maybe he would have taken me and left. People disappear in the bush all the time. True. And, and did you get a feeling that the being was male? You've, you've been calling him a he, so... Him. Yes. I think it was a him. I think it was a him. First of all, the chest, I don't know. I think since they're human-like, I think maybe the girls would be different, would have some sort of breasts or something. It's a male sort of form. How about the, an age? Do you, did you get a feeling for whether it was a young? I think it was young, yes. I think it was young. The whole uh, movement and everything, I think it was a younger being. Are you a spiritual person? Do you have a, a, a connection with that with psychic, yes. intuitive? Yeah. Yes. I realised that I was looking at something special that other people don't get to see. That's very egotistical now that I'm saying that. But I thought, wow. I said, God, wow, what have you presented to me here? Mm. The first um, response would have been for me, I would have spoken to him in Greek, uh, being an ancient language, you know. I wouldn't have spoken in English. (laughs) I thought if it comes closer now, I'll, I'll say something in Greek. They're, they're ancient beings, so they yes. would probably understand Greek. Oh. So that was in, what, 2016, you said five years ago? Yes, yes. 15, 15 must have been, 15. yes. So do you, yeah. do you still go out bushwalking? I don't go bushwalking, but I had another sighting uh, here in uh, Victoria. It's on the road to Benalla. Um, near Mansfield because I travel a lot with my work and I had a student up there. I like to get out of the car with my coffee and just stand, stretch a little because it's a few hours drive. And I was leaning on the car and one of them threw a a branch, uh, a log on, on the car and I had my back to it, and as I turned around, but this one was a very tall, black, um, uh, scarier uh, version. It was not like that one. He was hiding behind the tree, and as I turned around, and I'm not very tall, so I looked at my height, but then I looked up and I saw these black, black eyes uh, and this one was close. This was like five, six metres um, behind the tree. So I just got in the car and bolted. So it's only five metres away. Yeah, this one here was, yeah. So did you see the face then? His face was very black. Everything was black. The hair was dark. The face was dark. The eyes, I could see no, no white in the eyes. Um, and the hand... Uh, he was touching the tree, he was holding the tree, so I could sort of see 
uh, his head and the hand and a bit of the shoulder that was um, sticking out. But this year was a huge thing. It was eight foot tall and uh, I just, yeah, I ran then. But the thing is I had my back to it all this time and I was drinking my coffee and I'm, then I, when I was driving I thought if he wanted to um, to hurt me, he was right behind me. And the way he threw that, that branch uh, it was a, a soft throw just to get my attention. It, it hit the, the car. Isn't that interesting? So I wonder why I wonder why that being would do that. What was, what was it about I don't your attention? Think, uh, I don't think they are. That, some of them might be dangerous, but I don't think that their intention is to hurt people because they are very human-like. You see, I, I'm a small little woman and he was behind the branch there, uh, a huge creature. Uh, he would have taken three strides with his height to reach me, but he didn't. So I don't think he wanted to hurt me. I'd, he threw the branch, hey, look, I'm here. I think they're very uh, childlike. Even though they're huge, that's that's what I thought. Now thinking back to this big, tall one, so that's what I think. They're beautiful, and we should. Um, I think we should protect them. I said uh, because I spoke to someone, someone else from your team, and I oh. said I know we want to get photos and videos, but we don't want to spark up a hunt. They do exist and they are in the bush and they're beautiful uh, and they're not extinct. I just want to get uh, Mr. David Attenborough, what his name is, and tell him to rewrite their book because they're not extinct. They're here. been here all along. And you are one of those privileged people who's not only seen one but seen two. Yes, yeah, seen two. <laughs> but, but this one was... Uh, this one was scarier, the black one, scarier. And, but if I tell anyone, they think, uh, and I don't. I've told a few people and they look at you strangely. I don't care. I think uh, they're spiritual and maybe they present themselves to to people who, who believe in them or something. Yeah. They would be able to sense also your your good intentions, uh, yeah. You mean them no harm. I'm sure they can sense yeah. that. The scarier one, you got the idea that that black one was uh, male or female? I don't know. Maybe it was a girl. I don't know. Because I didn't see, or like I said, I saw the shoulder, his arm uh, on the tree, his hand on the tree and the face. But this was a huge creature. I mean, King Kong. Uh, oh, if you see this in front of you while you're walking in the bush, goodness. <laughs> and was it just the size that gave you that feeling? Just the size, yes. That it was scarier? What was different between the first being that you saw and that second one? And the first one was... Um, Playful. I, I mean, it was different. Um, he wanted to. He wanted contact. He was walking towards me. This second one was shy. I didn't get the feeling that he was behind the tree to run out and um, hurt me. I thought he was uh, scared or shy. That that's the feeling I got. And the way he threw that branch softly. I mean, he could he could have taken a bigger branch and. Uh, hit the tree uh, harder, the the car. But uh, no, it, it, neither of the times did I feel threatened or scared, to tell you the truth. Uh, the second one, um, ooh, and I did think about driving back, but I thought, no, I better not because I was alone and it was morning and the road was very quiet. So, but... Um, so that was day, that was daylight, a daylight sighting? Morning, yes, very oh. morning, 8.30 in the morning, yeah. And when was that? 
This was uh, in 2019, before the COVID. Yeah. And it was on the way to Ben Allen near Mansfield. Yes. Did you get the feeling that that second creature was uh, an older creature than the first one you saw? No. Mm, um, it may be uh, middle-aged, but no, he looked quite young and uh, very well um, groomed. If you understand what I'm saying, the hair was all uh, uh, shiny and um, I didn't – it looked like someone had just combed all his hair. Just got out of bed for the morning and had a shower. and Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. And so what did you do? What did you do then? You just went, got back in the car and – I got back in the car, of- yes. And, and the thing is, this one, the uh, there was a smell. Um, yes, I smelled the um, – like a dead animal or oh, oh. – it was a, a different smell that I smelt when I was drinking my coffee. I thought, what's this smell around here? But then I thought, I'm in the bush, dead animals, birds, something. And then when I'm looking at all of the reports and I'm seeing, uh, I thought, oh, that was, that was, people say they smell, so that was that smell. Because as soon as I opened the door to get out of the car, I smelt it. And it was a like sort of like a dead animal? Uh, sort of. N- not exactly. I can't really describe it like a toxic sort of sulfur sort of. Yes. Yeah. Was it, was it a, a really strong overpowering smell or, or did it feel like it was from some distance away? I don't think it was overpowering. It was, um, yeah, it was there. I don't know. It was a strong smell. It wasn't at a distance. It was a strong smell there. And when you got back in the car and left, could you still see it at the yes, rearview mirror? Yes, I could, yeah. Not the rearview mirror. When I got in and I looked from the, it, it hadn't moved from where it was. It was still there behind the tree. I pressed on the accelerator, I, you know, I discovered how fast my car can <laughs> go from one to a hundred. <laughs> and did you tell anybody about that one? I told the, I told my student, I said, look, um, I saw something and um, she said, oh, look, she said, I'll ask around. I think she told me that people have said that they've seen things in the mountains and she said one day when she took her dog, she saw something looking at her from a distance and she couldn't make out what it was. Um, so, yeah. What was the impression that it gave you? What do you think it wanted to communicate with you? I got the feeling that he was he was cautious. Uh, even the, the, uh, the first one was crazy. The second one, he was cautious. He was um, – because I don't know what they see. Maybe they see hunters with guns or – I think he was more scared of me than I was of him because if he wasn't scared, he would have come right up to the car. I'd like to go on an expedition and see another one, but I don't think they will present themselves to large groups. Uh, now how the men go and walk freely and um, they don't want that. They wouldn't present themselves. People walk in groups and think they'll see one. They won't present themselves like that. They they feel threatened they need to know that you're harmless, that you're that, – that's the feeling I get. They're, they're nature-loving creatures. They're in the forest and that's where they belong. And we are, we are destructors. They don't want anything to do with us. Not all of us are baddies. Like there are people like you and like me and like the members of my team who – have the best of intentions, uh, yeah. you know. 
the man who was with me, he well, we haven't spoken. We lost touch, as you do, after um, all this time. I think it impacted him negatively. <laughs> it sounds like it. He was, he was more scared than me. <laughs> he went around <laughs> locking all the doors and all the windows. Oh. He obviously wasn't wasn't brave and Greek like you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, have your neighbours got monkeys? <laughs> Because what? What, what the what the hell? What, what do you mean? <laughs> he got up. I turned around and looked at him. He was ready to faint. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> mate. <laughs> oh God, men, they're such chickens. <laughs> <laughs> the text version of the Tin Can Bay incident. Head to the AYR Yowie Hunters database. Go to reports, sightings, and then Queensland. Further sightings from near Mansfield and Victoria's Great Dividing Range, head to the Victorian section of our database. Thanks for listening.